Good morning. This is Arlen Suderman, Chief Commodities Economist at Stonex with your update from the trading floor a little before 9 a.m. on uh, Wednesday, July the 30th. How big are the U.S. corn and soybean crops or how small are they? That's the big question that the market's primarily focused on in the ag sector. I wanted to focus on that this morning myself and talk about the implications of it. We've been seeing unusually high crop ratings for both the corn and soybean crops to this point, suggesting, according to the various yield models, depending on the yield model that you like or don't like, whatever, putting the yield potential this year's crops at pretty high levels. Now, let's start with the soybean crop. The, much of the focus has been on soy, on corn, but and I'm going to get to that, but I want to start by focusing on the soybean crop. Right now, the soybean yield models are focused on a crop that could be somewhere in the 53 to 54, maybe more type of a yield range. That is highly a variable yet at this point where we could actually end up. August is the month that really determines the size of the soybean crop. That's when the most pods are set and filled and the weather conditions that we have for finishing that pod set and for filling those pods can have a big impact overall on the supply of soybeans that are available. Now, let's go to make some assumptions here. First of all, USDA has domestic crush for this new marketing year at 2.54 billion bushels. I'm going to go close to that at 2.530 billion bushels. I think we're going to have trouble to going to total maximum capacity. Um, so I'm pulling back a little bit when you consider time for maintenance, but we're over overall pretty close. USDA has exports for the new marketing year at 1.745 billion. I'm going to be at 1.65 billion and I get ending stocks for the new marketing year using USDA's current yield of 52.5 bushels per acre. I get ending stocks of 368 million bushels, which is 8.5% stocks to use ratio. A little bit higher than what USDA is currently projecting for the current market marketing year of 8% stocks to use ratio. So that would suggest a little bit weaker soybeans prices overall. The real question marks on the demand side come down to exports. What are we going to be exporting? Right now, China, they normally really ramp up their purchases of new crop U.S. soybeans during the month of July, and we've seen zero evidence of that. Yes, we have sold some soybeans to unknown destinations, but a relatively small amount, and other countries have been using that unknown designation with greater frequency in recent years. So we don't have any evidence that any of that is China. First, And also China is now, in order to strengthen the negotiating position, they're uh, unsuspending or they're removing the suspension of the retaliatory tariffs that have been there all along since one Trump 1.0, which means our soybeans are going to cost even more. Now, currently, we see enough Brazilian soybeans on the market that um, are they're competitive right on into the fall, even when we have new crop supplies available. They're competitive yet at this point based on current price levels. That would suggest that if there were no geopolitical tension, that prices need to go lower in order to be competitive. Um, and, and so the question is, will that happen? But we can't ignore the fact that there are geopolitical tensions. So I have exports at 1.65 billion, as I said, about 100 million bushels less than USDA. If, in fact, they don't buy from us and they buy everything from Brazil and they already have nearly 6 million metric tons or about 220 million bushels booked for September, October, November, um, and they, their reserve levels are estimated at but roughly twice what they bought from us during the current marketing year that ends at the end of August. So they could just end up going buying zero from us, or we could get a deal announced tomorrow from China that has them making large purchases. That's the big unknown right now going forward. Now, let's go back to the supply side. Let's say that August turns off hot and dry. 
and we reduced the national average yield by 5% to 49.9 bushels per acre. Well, that's going to push prices higher, you would anticipate, and make China, which is a value buyer, a little bit more reluctant to buy from us. And I'm going to cut in uh, exports to $1.5 billion, but that still tightens up supply to 302 million bushels, a 7.3% stocks to use ratio, which is really just barely above USDA 7.1% stocks to use ratio. On the other hand, what if it's 5% above trend because the current weather models for August are looking very favorable right now and yield models are pushing above 54 bushels per acre. Let's add 5% and go 55 bushels per acre. Um, well, if you're going to have that cheap of soybeans, we're already crushing near capacity of our expanded capacity, so we can increase that more. But it would make it pretty tempting for China to buy some soybeans from us more yet. So I'm going to go with USDA's $1.745 billion. I'm not going more than that because Argentina and Brazil still have a lot of cheap soybeans available. That that still allows ending stocks to go to 444 million bushels or 10.1% stocks to use. And that drops the marketing year average cash price well below $10. So that's something we got to keep an eye on. Now let's talk about corn. When you look at corn right now, the yield models are pushing the mid to upper 180 bushel per acre levels. In fact, I've had some people in the industry privately reach out to me and say their yield models are 190 bushels per acre right now. Now, I'm still using 181, which is what USDA has, but I will be changing that once we get the next week when we get our first of the year customer survey results in. And that will become our Stonex official yield estimate. So I haven't seen any of that data. So I'm not going to give any inklings of what it might be. All I can say is the yield models out there are pushing mid to upper 180s something bushels per acre. So let's say some of these private estimates out there are, are right at 190 bushels per acre. Let's go to that level. That's 5% above trend. So at 190 bushels per acre, that produces a 16.5 billion bushel crop. Well, that's going to be bearish to the market, and drive prices down. So that means we're going to feed more. To, when corn prices are cheap, you tend to feed more, feed less wheat, feed more corn. And uh, so I'm going to push uh, feeding to 6.1 billion bushels. And that's going to encourage more exports as well. So I'm going to go 2.6 billion bushels. And you say, well, that's less than USDA's at. Yeah, because my, my export estimate, based on the largeness of the South American crop this year, is a 2.48 billion. So let's go up to 2.6. That still leaves me at about 2.2 billion bushel carryout and marketing year average cash price below $4. Now, on the other hand, we're hearing a lot of anecdotal reports of pollination issues. And normally, I would discount these. And anecdotal reports are really risky. I want to say that right up front. They're very risky. What captures my attention this year is that we haven't had the heat that normally causes pollination problems. Now, we're getting a lot of talk about it's caused by the whirl wrapping tight around the tassel, not releasing the pollen when the silks are ready for it. And I've heard some horror stories from uh, customers and, and others in the industry and others who have been telling reporting to me directly about yields that are 60% or more off of what they normally get off of those fields. And some were say we have no problems at all. We're hearing a wild mouse stories. Now, agronomists out there are trying to find something to blame this on. They're trying to blame it on maybe excessive rain or, or heat or nighttime heat or whatever. But we're hearing these reports and seeing these tight world problems from across the Midwest from at least 10 different states right now that had very wide, widely varying pollination issue, uh, climate. None of them what we would normally think of being extreme weather. Excuse me. So we're, 
that makes me question there's something else here behind this. But regardless, how widespread is it? And the fact is, we're not going to know when our customer survey results come out next week because most people haven't been out in the fields pulling the husk back yet on that corn, and they're just going off of what the corn looks like. Now, last week, I drove from Kansas City to Detroit to see the crop across the Midwest. I saw one bad field of corn, looking field of corn, and that was in eastern Illinois. looked like it had been mudded in on June 10th, late, very uneven, looked very green, looked good color to it, but very uneven. That's the only bad field I saw driving across that way. Others have given me similar reports from their crop tours as well. But the crop tours thus far, most of them are not peeling back the husk to look at pollination issues. USDA's report on August 12th isn't going to give us an indication of it either because they're, it's going to be based only on farmer surveys. And they assume that the farmer understates yield. And they're going to be using satellite data also in that yield estimate. And the satellite data looks really good right now because that's how green does the crop look. And the crop looks very green. So the first real indication we're going to have is a systematic crop tour, which would be the Midwest Pro Farmer Crop Tour that takes place later in August, about the third week or so of August. Um, and that's a very systematic going through field, you know, and in, in following a set pattern that they follow every year, pulling back the husk, looking at the pollen issues. We're not going to know until then how widespread this problem is or if it is. And I'm hearing some horror stories about what it may be, so we have to respect that. So I'm going to give a what if. I talked about the 190 bushel possibility. Let's say it hurts the national average yield by 5%. That seems rather small, right? 5%? Well, 5% is 172 bushels per acre. That gives you a 14.9 billion bushel crop, which is about 800 million bushels less than what USDA is currently looking for. So that's a big loss in production, and they already have ending stocks at 1.66 billion bushels. Well, the market will get excited about that if that would be the case, and prices would likely rise. And when that happens, you see a reduction in usage, a reduction in feed usage, and a reduction in exports. So I cut feed usage down to 5.7, down from my base case of 5.85, and I cut exports down to 2.3 billion bushels with the higher prices. And that still leaves me with ending stocks of 1.335 billion bushels, or 8.9 nine percent stocks to use ratio that's just a little bit bigger than where we were in this year and that suggests a marketing year average cash price that may approach or even exceed the six dollar level so there is tremendous variability here and what i'm saying here is not i forecasting which of these scenarios we're going to be at but telling you whether you're a producer or an end user you need to have a risk management plan in place here because the possibilities of both bullish and bearish scenarios are highly significant for this corn market. And um, so you need to have a plan in place. And over the next three to four weeks, we're going to start getting answers to these questions and the market's going to respond to that. So with that, I'm going to leave you today. Know that in uh, on August 1st, we see tariffs go up for a number of countries, number of countries they don't because they have trade agreements with us. And we'll try to come back to with you and try to give our assessment where things are at on that. But today I wanted to focus on the corn and soybean crops. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to continue to get these updates from the trading floor. I hope you have a good day today.